Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Um, all right, so it is time to change the dulcimer strings and clean our fretboard. So we're gonna need a couple of things, all right? We're gonna need something to cut the strings with, okay? We're gonna need a good fretboard cleaner. This has 100% natural oils. Um, I'll list the information about it below. I use it on every stringed instrument I own and I've never had a problem with it. Uh, so if you're interested, that link will be below. And of course, you will need new strings for your dulcimer and uh, a rag to use the fretboard oil. Um, like an old t-shirt or something like that. Okay, so let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to do, um, well, one thing I want to talk about real quick is that you may have a scroll head like this, or you may have like a, a peg head uh, with like a flat paddle and guitar style tuners. Um, so either way, we're going we're gonna to put the strings on pretty similarly. Um, but if you want to watch, <sighs> so the first thing we need to do is we need to grab our snips here. Now, what I recommend you doing is loosen all your strings so that when you snip it, it doesn't go flying or anything like that. Okay. So loosen all your strings up and then snip them off. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to loosen all my strings. Get them loose. And see how they sound all, they're real loose, okay? And you can tell if you're loosening or tightening your strings. Isn't that lovely sounding? <laughs> by how it sounds. Okay, now we're just going to carefully snip off our strings. All right? And we want to make sure we take that string off that back side and we um, wind it up so that you can keep track of it. Of course, I'm losing track of it right now, but we want to keep track of it because animals and kiddos and even adults um, it's not good for them to step on those. So we put that over here. Then we take the other side of it, okay, and we remove that as well. And boy, I haven't changed these strings. I don't even want to tell you how long it's been since I changed these strings, but they sounded terrible. So when you're having a hard time, when the strings just sound dead, or if you ever have a hard time tuning them, you know that it's time to change them, okay? All right, so I snuck that out of there, out of that hole. And then I take the hole and I position it to where it's straight up and down, okay? So then I take this other leftover string here. And normally I'd be outside, but it's pretty cold out there today. So I'm not gonna do that. But now we take our snips again and we do the next string. I'll just do all four of them now and get these off the back side. Take them all three together here. And we wind them up just so we can keep track of them, like I said. I'm sorry I've got the sniffles a little bit too. Allergy season and all. Okay. Now we got this messy end over here that we're just going to take care of. Uh, now, with these scroll types, okay, we're, we want the string to go over the top of the pole and under when we put new strings on, okay? <clears throat> Now, if we have the other type, like the paddle head I was talking about, 
we want the, the string to go on the outside of the pole and then around the back side of it as we wind it up. It's going to wind up like that. All right. Same for over here. Over here, we want the pole, we want the string to go over the top of the pole and under. And then if we have the paddle style, we want it to go to the inside of the pole and around the back side when we put on the new strings. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how dirty <laughs> some of these frets are on my uh, dulcimer here. And you'll be uh, surprised at how good a job that this oil does of cleaning it up. Now, of course, you can get whatever you want to use to clean up your uh, fretboards, but you need to be mindful that it doesn't have any chemicals in it because you don't want to change the color of your wood and you don't want to mess up your wood. So you just want to, I just recommend that one because it's 100% natural oils. There's nothing in that that's going to mess up your instrument. And we've, you know, we've invested a lot in our instrument and we want to take care of it. So, all right, so now I've got all the strings removed. Now, you see how those are kind of shiny. When you get down here, I don't know if you can tell, but boy, those are dull looking. Uh, so I'm going to get a rag really quick, and then we're going to clean this fretboard up. Um, okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and I got <laughs> an old dirty sock. It's not dirty, but it just, uh, it's got holes in it and such, so that'll be a perfect thing to use. Okay. So now we take our oil and less is more here with this, with any, any of these things you use. You don't need a large amount. Um, but this one says shake bottle well. So um, another thing is I don't ever apply it directly to the fretboard. I apply it to the rag, then onto the fretboard, okay? And you'll see how little of this I use, I mean, <sighs> It's, it's amazing. First, I'm going to just wipe down, give it a good little wipe down here. All right. All right. So now, get that cap off of there. And um, we're just going to put a tiny little bit, like two drops, and then we're going to just work it in there, going down. And you'll see it will, uh, it'll make the fretboard look a little wet in the areas where you put it on there. I'm going to use another couple of drops here because it's soaking into my cotton. Um, and you just rub it down here real good more drops. Ooh, and I'm getting a I'm getting a uh, metallic look on my rag from the metal of the frets, I do believe. And the grunge that's on them. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to take a few moments. I'm going to turn the camera off. Let me put this lid back on this. But if you feel it, you'll feel that it's real smooth after you apply that. Um, and we just wipe it back off. And again, like I said, less is more here, so don't put too much on there. But um, I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm going to really clean uh, my frets up because they are yucky looking. Yeah, and I'm getting some grime off of them. So I may actually take an old toothbrush here real quick. Here, let me, and you know, this is kind of disgusting, you guys, but this is, you know, finger, fingernail oils and things.
Can you see that little build up there that I'm getting off? Um, fingernail oils and stuff like that will get them a little dirty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the camera and uh, I hope you can see that and see how grimy those are. These are a little cleaner because I play them so much. But okay, I'm going to stop the camera and scrub those out just a little bit. Just with a light uh, soft bristle toothbrush and get that cleaned up and then I may apply just a touch more oil after I have scrubbed that it may come off a bit and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my medium toothbrush here and I'm just giving it a little scrub there to get that fretboard not that fret wire cleaned off real good there. And I'm using a uh, there's nothing here that's going to hurt my wood of my fretboard. I also use the edge of my fingernail if it's really stubborn. to be afraid to change your own strings it's nothing it's not that difficult I would recommend when you go buy a set of strings uh, that you buy at least two sets they're not that expensive but go ahead and buy at least two sets in case you have a little little faux pas of some sort and uh, then you won't worry too much about messing up it's not that hard and uh, you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that you did something and you know that you can take care of your own instrument so just go down clean them up if they need cleaning up if they don't that's fine okay so now we are ready for our oil So now we're ready for our oil and we get in next to those wires and it's going to clean and condition your fretboard and I'm just using like a drop at a time here people so don't you can overdo it with this stuff so just go down and I'm getting black residue off little bit of black which is coming off of my frets okay and then we'll just clean down here and it's uh all right so you can see where the black was coming off okay so that's all we need of that and we are going to take a dry part of the rag that has not been wet and we're just going to rub it down that's going to remove any excess oil and get the oil off of your frets. Okay. Just going to wipe it down. Wipe it all down. And um, there we go. All right. Now, it's time to put the new strings on. Now. If you uh, see here, I have little pegs coming out, little, almost look like nails coming out. So that requires a loop end string. Okay. Now there's something called a ball end string, and your loop would just have a a, a metal ball in it, and you would have instead of this back here, you would just have a hole instead of this and that hole you would go from it's usually an extra piece out here and you would go from the underside of it and thread it through and that that ball end would stop there where it needs to stop but this are these are loop end so we're gonna get our pack open 
And I've got these strings um, listed below if you'd like. If you're interested in them, you know, you don't have to get... You know, you can get whatever strings you'd like. Okay. Open this up. And one cool thing about this is our strings have little color codes on them. And let's see if our... Oh, yeah, it does. Great. Okay. So the strings have color tags on them. And if you see right there, it says, what, fourth green. So that's your fattest string. That's your base string. And that goes farthest away from you. Then your middle string there is purple. And see, it's got a nice little purple tag on it. You can't mess this up. It's so easy. Okay, and then your, your two high Ds are silver. So, okay. So what I'm going to do uh, here is I want you to look at this with me and we'll talk about it. The way these tuners are oriented here, I want to go all the way back to this back post first because I'm going to have to interweave this wire underneath. Some of these are higher and some of them are lower than others. But if we did this first one and we did that first, we'd have a hard time passing it because the string would be in the way. Um, so we want to start back here. Okay. So what string is that? That is our third string, our middle string. Uh, or our, if we're doing DAD, that's our A string. So... We look on our chart and we go, okay, our third string was purple. So we grab, wow, this, this just couldn't be easier, you guys. We grab our purple little right there. And we open it up. Now, if you have the other style that I was talking about, the uh, paddle style head, you don't have to worry about this as much because it's not going to get in the way. But, um, all right. So this is our middle string. We're going to take our little purple. It just pulls right off real easy. And here's our loop. Okay. And we're going to put it where that middle string would be. Okay. So farthest away from us is our base string, that big one. So that's our fourth string. This is our third string. These two over here would be our two D strings, our highest and smallest strings. Okay, so that middle one's right there. So I'm gonna put this right here around that little slot and I'm gonna bring it up. Now, I have some different spacing options here uh, because this could be a six string dulcimer but I like the middle slot um, so that's the one I use because that puts it like almost perfectly in the middle of my fretboard okay and then I just keep my my other hand down as I'm pulling with this left hand I just keep my right hand down to hold that into place back here so it won't slide off okay all right, so then I come forward with that and see, I, I'm just holding it down with one finger there. Now, we're going to this far pole back here. So what we've got to do is bring it under the first one, under the second one, under the third pole, and you just kind of have to wiggle it in there. So we want them underneath all those poles, right? Okay. Then, we're going down into the top. Okay, so we get that down into the top there. Now, we're going to hold that here and we're going to pull back. And what you got to do is, the best way to do this is put your hand flat like mine is 
on the dulcimer so that this back piece is holding that into that uh, groove back there where our string is at. And we're just going to pull up to give ourselves some slack for when we're um, turning that tuning peg. Okay. So now I got to pull on the front of it to keep so that I can lift this finger up. Okay. Now. I'm going to try to put that in there a little more. You may need to grab something to help you fish your wire out uh, there a little bit. These are uh, the scroll heads are harder to do, harder to maneuver than the um, paddle heads. And I'm just going to take this out of all the poles that I just carefully wove them, wove them into just so that I can get this string out of here. And I got it. Okay. All right. So now, now what I'm going to do is pull the end up out here a little bit. I'll even wrap it around this tuner just for a second, just to get that out of my way. Okay. And now we're going to just put that under the poles going back under all of our poles to where that string is tucked in there. Okay, now I'm going to pull it a little bit and I'm going to make sure that I'm coming up over the top and under again. Okay, so I'm going to get this out of the way, like I said, and kind of do it backwards. Um, you have to pull this sort of tight to, to where you can start winding. Now, remember I said we're winding it over the top. So you want to line it up there and you may have to use your thumb and and push it push it over. You know, you may have to push your string over a little bit to get keep it from going to the end of the pole. And you just start winding there. Okay? And after you've wound it a little bit, you want to cut your excess off with your snips while you're still holding it tight. All right, that fell on the floor. I'll get that later. But now we've got room to twist. So we're twisting that around the pole. And we want to make sure, of course, that we're leaving enough string there to where it can go around the pole quite a few times. And we want to make sure that it doesn't go off the end so we can keep pushing it over. And we just get it to where it's loosely on there. You can see how that's done there. And then we'll be able to tighten that. Okay, let's go to the next string. Um, the next string in is this string right here. So we want to do our second string next because that's the next pole. And remember, that was our two um, D strings that are wound together. And they are silver. So we grab our silver stack here. And we are going to undo them here. And they just sort of have it wound around a couple times and then you can just sort of pull it back and it pops open. All right, and there's two of them here together. So we'll take our little tab off. Now we'll separate these two into one. Take our other one and carefully place it somewhere so you're not going to lose it. Okay, now take our loop. And we we're doing our second string. So uh, our second string is going to be right there. All right. So we're going to put that in our loop, same as before. Put it in our groove and into our little bridge there. And we can pull it down here so that we don't have slack. Then we're going to bring our other hand down like we did before. We're going to come up with this. 
and I'm going to just go down with it first and I'm gonna I'm gonna twist my little hole as soon as I get it in there so that it lifts the string up for me this time that would be helpful for it to lift the string up for me so I've got to whoops keep dropping it feed it in a little more and then lift it up again feed it lift it up see how that that lifted up the string for me there to where I can just sort of grab it and pull it up like that all right now I'm going to pull that up carefully and then I have to wind it um, remember it has to stay on top of my pole and then I've got to get it underneath the other two poles all right so I've got my string pulled up wind it under that one and then I push it under that one as well and I bring it down here and it it's it as it's loose you can just sort of maneuver it around in there underneath those poles I'm gonna bring it back out because I didn't leave myself enough slack so if you did that if you didn't leave yourself enough slack you can just go back and get yourself some more pushing that through and pulling up get yourself as much slack as you need this is pretty forgiving here people so don't don't make it hard on yourself okay and it'll just take a little bit of patience to work this in and, and do it. Okay, so the second string, I've got it looped in there and I've got it below the other two poles. Now I'm gonna cut off. My piece there and I'm gonna wind her up. Gonna make sure it's in where I want it to be in at. And I'm not tuning it very much. Okay, now let's get our other small string, our first string. And uh, we're gonna do that one because our bass string is over here on this side. It's not gonna bother it this string right here going down like this is not going to bother that so I'm just going to go ahead and put that one on next and that is our first string and it's going to go right I can't see that right down there onto that one okay and then we just whoops down here going to balancing act onto that one And then we just feed it in there, hold it down, bring it up like we've done before. And then we take and go down into our pole there, turn it a little bit so that it can come up, turn it up a little more so we can feed it more. Okay, now. Again, we're going to come up here and get back our slack out of it. Okay, and then we'll pull our extra on down and pull tightly and then start winding. And after we go just a touch, we're going to cut our excess. Okay. And then we're going to put that there. 
and wander up. All right, now I will say that if you have the paddle style, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier to change your strings than it is on this. But this is not impossible, so I don't want you to think that. Okay, so we've got three of them on there. Now we've got to get this bass string on there, the big one. And that one was labeled green, so we'll take our little label off. Get our string out. Whoop. And we will put her in. Loop. Line it up. Put it in back here. Bring it up. Our fretboard there. And we'll go down into the top of it. Like we've done before. And then I'm going to start turning a little bit so that I can get it to come up for me and I don't have to go fishing for it because that's kind of hard to do. The fishing part of it. Okay, so now it's sticking up and I can grab it pretty easily. All right. So now I take and grab my slack out of this thing as I'm pulling up right there. And I want about that much. Okay. Pull up. Start twisting. After I get around one revolution there, I'll cut her off. Just as low as I can in there. Okay. And then we're just going to twist her until... Now, if you have a table, and it'd probably be a lot easier if you had a table that you could do your work on here. Now, as we get it closer, we want to make sure we thread it in at the nut here, where we, where it's supposed to be. And again, as we get it tighter, we just want to have it just tight enough. All right, there we go. All right, now you have strung your dulcimer. Okay, now, here's what it looks like. All right, now, we've got to tune it up. All right, now one thing to keep in mind here is that when we are, um, when we're tuning it, we want to just slowly take all of our strings up. Once we get it in tune, our strings are going to stretch just a touch. Um, I've got to install my little strap. But our strings are going to stretch just a touch, so we want to um, keep retuning it, okay? Um, so I am going to slowly tune this up, and um, then I will be right back with you, and we will play a little bit, okay? Um, my high-tech strap. There we go. It's attached and ready to go. Okay, I'll be right back with you. Now, remember I said your strings will stretch. So, Be prepared to tune them multiple times. All right, now that we've got it in tune, here comes the best part. Playing, oh, playing after we put new strings on. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. I do hope you enjoyed that and got something out of it and I hope you're not afraid to uh, change your own strings. You can do this 
And before I go, I just want you to always remember Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.